Alright, pause this video and try the problem on your own. Let's start by reading this problem. We're told that Robin collected data on the number of hours she watched television on Sunday through Thursday um, nights for a period of three weeks. The data is shown below. Um, so there are 15 data points, 5 times 3, 5 days a week, 3 weeks. And they want us to construct a box plot. So that's a box and whisker plot. Um, to do that, a box and whisker plot, if we just you know sketch them out in general, we're going to have something like, let's say this. All right. And this would be our low value right here. This would be our high value. This is going to be our second quartile, which is our median. This is our third quartile. And this is our first quartile right here. Sometimes I might ask you for the interquartile range, the IQR. And that equals the third quartile minus the first quartile. The first quartile is the median of the lower set of data, and the third quartile is the median set of the higher set of data. Um, so we're going to find those numbers, right? Um, I'm going to take this table and copy it and bring it down below. Now there are ways to do it on the graphing calculator as well. I'll show some parts of that. And that might actually be the easiest thing to do here, but I'm also going to do it by hand in case that's what you're comfortable with. Okay. So the first thing I would do is list these from in ascending order to be able to quickly find the median. We have 1 as the lowest value, then 2, then 2, then 3, 3, 3, so 3, 3, 3, then 1.5, 1 1.5, 1, 1. 1. Oh, what am I doing? 1.5, 1. 1.5, 1. 1. clearly needs to go after 1. So 1, and then 1.5, 1. 1.5, 1. 1. erase this one. Good thing I left space in between there. Um, and then, oh boy, I'm not doing very good here. And then two and a half also fits. So I'll move this over. <laughs> that is not very efficient. Okay, so 2.5. Sorry about that. 2.5. Move this again. See, this, this is why you would have an eraser, I suppose. All right. So there's two 2.5s. And then it looks like the next biggest data point is three and a half. I can move this back now. Oh boy. Sorry about that. All right, so three and a half is next. Four, 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 four and a half, five. Four and a half, and then five. And then I put commas between these. One, I'm going to count the data points now because I usually miss them, as you just saw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yes, did I miss one? All right, so the, we have to find the mean, the median of these. And I know a lot of students, what they do, and I'll, I'll just replicate this, is to cross out numbers as they work their way in. I want to not to cross the numbers out directly. I'm going to cross out below them. So these two, right? These two. Keep going. We have an odd amount of numbers, so we are going to find a number directly in the middle. This is one technique that students like to use. We just keep crossing out pairs. And then we have 3 ultimately here, which is Q2. Double check it, though. Make sure there's the same number of numbers on each side. 3, 6, 7. 3, 6, 7. So if you have an odd amount of numbers here, 15, notice that there are 7 on each side that form the middle. So if you have an odd amount, take 1 away and divide by 2. In this case, if you have 15, take 1 away. The 1 you're taking away is the number in the middle. Divide by 2, and that's going to tell you Right, how far the median is from uh, from the edge of the numbers, I guess we could say. So, for example, seven is that distance here, right? So that's a quicker way of finding it. But whatever works for you. Often, what I do is I write the numbers out. I just point to the number in the middle and count to see if I've got it balanced. And if it's in balance in some way, I shift a little bit. So we've got a couple of things we can plot already. Uh, here, we can draw a line at the number. What do we say it was? Three. So we have our range here. Let's set that up. It goes from 1 all the way up to 5. Let's look at our dashes. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we can go by halves. 1, 1 and a half. 2, skip 1, right, for halves. And this will give us a nice setup for our box. And what's your plot? We know that our median, we just said, is at 3. That's our Q2. And we know our low value is over here at 1. Put a little dash, a smaller dash there, and our highest value is five here, right? Um, so now we need our other quartiles. 
All right, so these are easier to find by hand, I think, because um, what you're doing essentially is finding for the third quartile the median of the larger set of data, the upper half, excuse me, and for the first quartile you find the median of the lower half of the data. So I can remove our table. We don't need this anymore. It's kind of in the way. All right, so what are those points? So here, right, this is our upper half. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven data points, an odd number. So we could take seven minus one divided by two. And that tells me that my median is three from the middle. One, two, three. Here's the median. Um, right, it has a distance of three on each side, or you can cross off on each. Same is going to be true here, right? Um, we're looking at this lower half of the data. And again, we have this point right here, which has three on each side. So this is Q1, and this is Q3. I think we're done if we have that. Let's see. So Q1 is 2, Q3 is 4. Q1 is 2, right here. And Q3, we just said, is 4. It's a pretty well, well balanced set of data. We draw that box around here and two lines for the whiskers, box and whisker plot. So you want to label that Q3, and this is Q1, and you want to say Q2 equals 3, Q3 equals 4, Q1 equals 2, and this is 1, and that's 5. Um, and I think that's all we have to do here. Great. So we construct a box plot, and this tells you the spread of the data. You can see that this is pretty even, um, right? In other words, the this chunk, this interquartile range here, Right, it's pretty well spread around the median, and these numbers out here aren't really too far from them. Um, hopefully we'll be able to talk about other problems, how to find outliers uh, using the interquartile range, which basically says, uh, depends on the rule, but if the, you know your outlier is like way out here, if you have a maximum out here, and your interquartile range is this small, you can see that it's really beyond the range that, that all the other data fits in, because 50% of your data pretty much fits inside this box here. So that would mean that this point is an outlier, and we can talk more specifically about that in other problems. Hope this helped.